We called a meeting of people who are willing to take this study on and the Cochrane Centre is willing to provide some support to start it off. Uh, we brought together people who normally don't come together. Okay. Uh, we brought a whole lot of clinicians both from government, private, medical college, voluntary mm -hmm. uh, and uh, herpetologists, people who study snakes. And we had the manufacturers there because what we are telling them is that the moment we have such a test available, you should be able to, you know, develop the antibodies against specific snakes which will reduce allergy and improve effic the effectiveness of the treatment. So one of the objectives of the study is to look at how does the evolutionary diversity of snakes mm. affects the clinical presentation of snake bite. Okay. And this we intend to do by do ask, answering this question in 15 centers uh, across the country which are representative of the ecosystems uh, in India. And uh, the second part, only about 5 to 10 percent of people may bring dead snakes. So the other thing is what Dr. Pratap was saying is that we are looking at how can we through blood tests or tests of the swabs from the bite site look for proteins mm -hmm. uh, or DNA which may help us identify which is a species. Mm -hmm. So we are doing what is called a syndrome species correlation. Syndrome means the syndrome of the clinical syndrome of the patient mm -hmm. and species relates to the species of snake. We've got people who are part of Arnon's clinical network, the toxicology special interest group. But we realized when we map the country to where these centers are, we've got very good representation in the south and in the east, including northeast. But we don't have much representation in Rajasthan, Gujarat, the western uh, deserts of Rajasthan, where snakes will be different. So now through this meeting, we've got contact names of people who are working there. Mm -hmm. So because we are working with what we call epistemic communities. Each group has got their own sphere of influence and together we can tap into the collective strengths of everybody. What we're trying to do is to develop a test mm -hmm. which can tell us when the patient comes to a hospital which snake has bitten the patient. Is, is it poisonous or non-poisonous? First. First. And uh, this can help develop more specific treatments. It's like, um, you know, before we knew what was the cause of fever, uh, you know, you will treat every case for malaria. But now when a fever comes, you know, it can be, it can be typhoid, it can be scrub typhus, it can be dengue, and we have tests to sort it out. So you don't give every patient antibiotic. You, you rationally think that is modern treatment. So if we had a test to tell us which is the snake which is bitten, and we know the venoms are entirely different, then we could actually have an anti sera mm -hmm. antibody against a specific snake. This is called a monovalent mm -hmm. antibody. Okay. Now in snake, in Australia, they have four snakes mm -hmm. which are very different from our snakes. Mm -hmm. Now what the Australian government has done mm -hmm. is to invest in research mm -hmm. to identify which is the snake which is bitten. So they have a, a test where you uh, have a, a plate with four wells because they are four poisonous snakes and you, in, you take the serum and uh, drop it into each of the four wells. You add another chemical, which is the uh, antibody, and you look for a color change. And which well the color change happens tells you which is the snake which is bitten. And then they use the antibody against that specific snake. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you'll ask why has it happened in Australia? Simply because the government has invested in research to help develop such tests and treatments. That's the direction we want to move in our country.
people's message must go to the government that uh, and the public that there needs to be investment to support such studies to in order to improve the treatment and reduce deaths due to snake bite. There's another reason why it's important for the public and the government to be aware of an initiative like this. See, this particular meeting was funded by the people of the UK. Okay. How is that? Because the Cochrane Center, in last year's meeting when we worked with Anand, we want to be relevant to the people and we've got a project funded by the government of the UK through UK Aid, DFID, DFID, where the people in the UK, even though they're going through economic recessions, they are willing to put money to improve health outcomes in Africa, in Asia, parts of the world. Now we are in a position where the government of India is considered to be one of the major funders mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And the UK aid, they've said we're no longer going to fund India from 2014 or 15. But if we don't get the money from overseas philanthropic agents, is the government willing to reprioritize to take care of its marginalized people, to take care of all the neglected conditions, which is until now has been the purview of overseas aid. If at all we come to a point in, in production where we can have monovalent antivenom, that means specific antivenom for Russell's viper, specific for Cobra, specific for saw scale viper, and specific for crate, there is a question of distribution. Because right now you give polyvalent antivenom, I mean you can give it the same thing all over the country. Okay. There are four manufacturers, they can provide it everywhere in the country, right? When you have monovalent antivenom, then your supply chain needs to know where do we need more crate venom, where do we need more. For that, governments have to be involved. Through our project, the Effective Healthcare Research Consortium, that is a UK aid project with Liverpool, uh, we've already got some seed funding earmarked for this, which we will use to set this thing in motion, while we get more funding to do other parts of this. It's a group of researchers working in Cochrane, in the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, there's the Effective Healthcare Group. It's us in CMC Velo. It's the it's the uh, Stellenbosch University in South Africa, mm -hmm. and the South African Cochrane Center, and a China network in uh, Chongqing. In China. And we are trying to improve the lives of people in all these continents mm -hmm. and countries through providing reliable evidence. So when we worked with Anand, we realized there was no reliable evidence for many of this. So our responsibility is to see how we can facilitate that the production of this evidence.